All right, and these are the sort of symptoms of bad switches that I'm talking about. Um, unlocking works fine, but locking, not so much. Um, <clears throat> and the switch over here actually was just as bad, if not worse, until I cleaned it. But after cleaning and that sitting in properly, it's nice and responsive. And this one unlocks really well, but as far as locking goes, uh, it's uh, <clears throat> pretty much just getting worse and worse. Even with the engine running, so there's that extra little bit of voltage uh, from the alternator running. Yeah, it's just not locking at all anymore. I mean, it'll unlock fine. And once that's down... Oh, nope. Yeah, so... I'll just show you guys how to uh, clean these switches now. All right, and so all you will need for this is your switch assembly. I just took the whole panel off because it's really easy. Uh, screwdriver and some contact cleaner. Uh, I just went with some Electrosolve contact cleaner. It's really fast evaporating stuff. Uh, I don't want to breathe it in, get in your eyes, avoid skin contact, hence the latex, well, nitrile gloves. And since I'm doing this just sort of on the camera, I got a rag just to cover up the work surface. Soak up the stuff that gets blasted off. So uh, I'll just show you how to do it on this switch. It'll apply for any other switches. I might take a crack at these as well. These ones are acting up for me as well. Um, but it's not a huge concern right now. So I just basically, oops, I'm always trying to keep things where you can see them. And also, maybe change the angle of the lighting. There we go. So, let's go ahead and pry one side. And I find that if you pry one and then sort of pull out, there you go. You got the whole switch out. These ones are going to be harder, obviously, which is why I'm a bit more apprehensive to try it. And so, yeah, this little this can of contact cleaner only cost me ten bucks. Uh, same as a switch at a very cheap junkyard. Um, more expensive junkyards want forty or fifty bucks for them which is the same price as new, but this seems to be working well. Interesting. So I didn't have this in any of my other switches. Um, this little rubber section here. So I'm curious if maybe they've been worked on before. I'm not sure. So yeah, you may or may not have that. I didn't in two of my switches, but they were on the passenger side. So maybe they know the driver's side is more liable to be open. So then you just undo oops, the clip there and the clip there. And then this pops off and this is what you need. And this is actually a fair bit cleaner than the other one that I worked on. I should have taken a video of that one. And so you can just see the contact pads there. Not so much that one. That one is actually quite dark though. Um, I'm going to get my other light thingy set up and resume filming. Okay, so let's see if we can zoom in. There we go. And so hopefully you should be able to get a better... Right, and you can see the sort of oxidation and tarnishing on the uh, switch contact there. You can see it's it's not nearly as bad as the other one was in terms of grime in the switch, but they are not great. That one, not so bad. And this one, not so bad either, but those ones that sit open normally, those are quite dirty. So... We are just going to give these a quick blast with contact cleaner and ignore those cables as you're just doing the extra light. So, shake up the can a little bit and put it right up to the uh, switch contact and then just give it a little spritz. These ones are quite good.
Okay, and so this is already starting to evaporate. I'm just going to actually, well, let's show you. You'll be able to see that it's already made quite a big difference. Oh, no, wait, that's the wrong one. It started working already on the uh, ones that are normally open. You can see around the edges, they're quite a bit brighter. So we're just going to go in there with a screwdriver. Ideally, you'd want a burnishing tool of some sort. But just to sort of rub that and screw it up and help the contact cleaner do its work. It's already drying up a fair bit. So we're just going to go ahead and spritz it again. So this one will be a lot more worn than the passenger side just because it's on the driver's side. It's just the nature of it. Um, not sure if it will make as much of a difference. But we will see because you can see there's still a bit of a pattern on there from the top contact where it touches it. can see that sort of discoloration. And rubbing doesn't seem to be doing a whole lot. Some sort of abrasive pad would be ideal for this. But uh, those ones do appear to be a lot shinier. And these ones, quite a lot better as you can see. That's quite nice. And so then what I generally do is, uh, at least for the last ones that I've done, I just rinse them off with water and let it air dry for a little bit. So I'll just go ahead and do that. And then we'll take a crack at doing some of these other ones that are all part of this one big assembly and see how that goes. Uh, this switch is actually fine. Um, and it'll it'll be a similar process. If, if there is enough demand, I can take this one out and sort of take a look at it. Um, but that one seems pretty good. Uh, so I'll try and take this assembly out after I go ahead and whoop, watch this. Okay, so my windows do also give me trouble, but not nearly as much as the lock switch has been. The lock, yeah, as you saw in that little clip, uh, the lock switch pretty much just died off altogether. So we'll let this dry off fully before putting it back in, if you're in a hurry. Isopropyl alcohol will absorb the water and sort of help it evaporate. But as you can see, there's still a little bit of that tarnishing, but it's um, it's much better. There's a lot more clean contact area. Um, that one is very good, actually. So this is the sort of thing where you would probably want some sort of small sandpaper thing. Uh, or something like a burnishing tool to help rough that up, but um, that seems not too bad. <clears throat> I've also found a dedicated slide for the zoom, so it's quite handy. Just go ahead and see if I can even get this out. I'm genuinely curious just to see how this goes together myself. Probably should have moved the camera up slightly higher as well. But it looks like we have it, and it's fucking disgusting. Yeah. So, basically, we just got our window lock. Controls. Oh, damn, that's tough. Okay, so these ones all have their little rubber guards, too. So I think that's I think that's a big part of why there isn't a whole bunch of grime and like hair and stuff inside of this one like there was in the other one. 
because uh, the passenger side was just brutal. Let's just go ahead and put a bit more force on that. Okay, and that one just goes... Ah, you see, and this one... Oh, maybe not. I thought the switch contact was on the end of it, but it was just some grease from the look of it. So now... Let's go ahead and pry these up. Pry these up. And so now I'm, I'm not sure if this one will have a little bit of logic in it because it has the fast down window uh, where you basically just press it down and it uh, puts the window down automatically. I guess auto down is probably a better way to put it. And I'm going to wash this separately. Um, I'm just wondering if this is beefier because it just has the multiple connectors. It definitely looks like it has some more logic going on down there. You know what, I think we can actually peek in here and take a look. This is delved from a, just a cleaning tutorial now targeted at the groups that I'm in, just to help people out. And now this is just me genuinely interested in taking something apart. Uh, otherwise I probably would have just done this. Oh yeah, and then you can see yeah, there's a little bit of logic stuff going on down there. This stuff is all hard soldered in. I'm not going to take this apart because this assembly is fairly expensive even at an auto wreckers, uh, and I want to keep this intact. So I will wash this th with rubbing alcohol, but not water for this part. But you can, let's go ahead and zoom in. And uh, we can just go ahead and examine this. Oh yeah, look at that. That's pretty nasty. So it looks like it's the ones that stay open, which are the biggest culprits for oxidization and grime buildup. And if we just go ahead and scratch at this, it really doesn't have much of an effect. So let's go ahead and spray it with some contact cleaner. And this stuff is safe for plastics and PCBs and stuff. Uh, and you can't see, is it just me? I think that ha has had a decent effect on it. And you can see the uh, LEDs, which are mounted over the switch illumination. And interestingly, you will you can actually see these ones <coughs> are mounted backwards on the PCB. Uh, you can see that they're surface mount ones mounted on the back side, with the lens popping up through, which means it will be nice and uh, flush here. So that's that's a little cool technique. Not a whole lot uh, relevant to cleaning though. Let's go ahead and spritz this again. Basically, you're a dentist for a day. Uh, that one is not having a huge effect. Oh, yeah, and there we go. Look at that one. That's just awful. Yeah, I'm not sure if there's a whole lot that can be done for this side or not. Uh, if these are passing the full current of the windows. Or... Oh, you can't even see that. Let's just bring that out. I'm just going around to each of these and give me a little spritz. And so we'll just let that soak, and I'll just show you the reassembly process for the switch. Uh, it's pretty basic. Just go ahead, pop that back on, pop this in, and then these should only go on one way. Uh, I find that this line tends to go on the opposite side, like so. All right, I'm not sure if it'll show up very well, but. It the contact cleaner and a bit of rubbing seems to have made this sort of dark spot a lot more reflective. 
So it's, it seems like it has cleaned some of the oxidation off of it. And you can see this one, oops, yeah, get a little further angle. This one here is still pretty gross. So if we give that a little spritz to point blank, contact cleaner. Just sort of scratch away at it. And so this, it definitely seems like it, the coating has been compromised. Uh, this sort of, I, I really don't think it's going to be gold plating on these with a sort of brass colored coating. Uh, it's definitely missing from those spots. It looks like we've sort of possibly scraped away the rest of it. This route it's like a lot of few times. We'll come back to that one. This one here is shiny now. Oh shit. I believe that was from there. I'll have to go through the footage and figure out precisely where this is from. <laughs> this little, uh, oops, little bit here. Um, that one not doing so hot. Looking. It's a little harder to see on camera, but it is fairly nice and shiny. Let's rotate back around to this one here. Yeah, so that's a shiny shirt that's on there. So, I don't know if I'll be able to really get into these ones much. But the main thing was the, um, the locks. Pretty difficult to get to. Although it is shinier. So it looks like at least some of the corrosion uh, is coming off. Or oxidization, whatever this buildup is. And I tested that. Um, passenger side after quite a long time uh, where everything would have dried out of it a couple hours that was still pretty good uh, I didn't really change back to being horrible and impossible to actually deal with uh, and like lock any doors so that's good so yeah and then let's just take a look at this section here I've got pretty much all of those and so you can see the ones that were fairly dark colored now have a bit of a shine to them so we have definitely cleaned some stuff off of them uh, probably not in the best way possible but you can't really get a burnishing tool in there uh, it should hold up for a fair while I think so this one seems pretty good honestly and I'm guessing it's set in like so like so so let's go ahead and there we go. Oh, yeah, just off. So that looks like it would have said it's been there, but it's not. Give it a shot this way around. Nope. Okay, I'm gonna roll back the footage and double check. All right, and here we are with the switch installed finally, and success. You can do that as much as you want. Well, I mean, you know, eventually it'll wear out uh, or get some more grime on it. But yeah, I am very 
very pleased with that. And if I go ahead and actually, because I couldn't, um, oops, shit, by professionalism, stay on the floor. Uh, I couldn't uh, actually raise my window um, unless I had the engine running. But now, I mean, it's still not great. The motor itself is... Oh, okay, yeah. So it is the motor more causing that one. <laughs> so it didn't solve all your problems. But, um... For locks... That's definitely what you need to do. I mean, well, I mean, you know, probably. Um, may or may not work. Your mileage may vary. But I would definitely recommend it. It's, uh, ten bucks at most. Uh, thirty bucks if you decide to buy some nice black gloves for the presentation quality. Which, I mean, as you saw, it's down there still. So, I hope you found this useful. Uh, like I said, I think it'll be roughly the same for sw vehicle switches in general. Um, I mean, it might not be as good to access as that one, but, um, yeah. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you found it useful. Uh, that's it.